Uh, the MPs, you won't be at all surprised uh, to hear, have just voted through uh, vaccine passports or COVID passes, as the government is now euphemistically calling them. Uh, now, the vote was 369 to 126. So uh, we think 78 uh, Tory MPs rebelled against the Prime Minister. Pretty significant. Not enough to carry the day, obviously, because Keir Starmer's strange approach to being in opposition seems to be that he always ob obediently votes with the leader of the Tory party, which seems strange, but that's what he does. Uh, it's gone through. Uh, not a surprise but a rebellion and what they're worried about, the re rebel mm. MPs, is that this COVID pass, the vaccine passports, are an assault on our freedom. They've been putting them up with them for some weeks now in both Wales and Scotland, uh, where they have uh, been spectacularly unsuccessful. They have achieved the square root of damn all in terms mm. of stopping the virus. So why, oh why, would you imagine, David, they're imposing vaccine passports on England now? Well, I mean, I think it's a very sad day for a free society, isn't it? You know, if you remember, the government insisted that they would never come to this. They would never vote for vaccine passports. And yet here we are once again being told one thing by the government. And then, of course, the government reneging and doing exactly the opposite. And of course, as you say, the, there is no such thing as an official opposition. The official opposition seems to be the government. But make no mistake, this is no longer about COVID. This is about control. And I've warned about this for weeks and weeks and weeks. And what they will do with this is that essentially it is the beginning of a digital ID system. This is the beginning of you having to prove who you are, where you go and who you're with. Uh, indeed. Now, uh, Dr. Angelique Kurtzi, uh, the South African doctor who first discovered Omicron, and she has been screaming for the rooftops now for a couple of weeks. Uh, I think this is her, the second piece she's written for the Daily Mail. She's written an another piece for the Mail to say, to say that Britain is seriously overreacting to Omicron, yeah. that uh, all the signs are that it is a pretty mild variant uh, that will only make you sick for a couple of days uh, and doesn't look as if it's got much chance of killing you at all. As I understand it so far, the death count in Britain so far after two and a half weeks is one, and that only emerged a couple of days ago, and we still don't know the details about that death for all we know. It could have been from someone who's 95 with all sorts of other medical conditions. So the statistics do not seem to back up the need for these draconian new restrictions. No, well, that's absolutely right. I actually hosted a medical show last week where I interviewed doctors from South Africa and they exactly the same. Britain is completely overreacting. We know that viruses mutate and they change. And norm, the normal pattern is that viruses mutate and they become maybe more transmissible, but less dangerous. And that is what we seem to be seeing in South Africa. Now, Dominic Raab, as you know, got caught out fantastically by not knowing how many patients with Omicron were actually in hospital. He said 250. Of course, that was entirely wrong. It was 10. As we know, it also doesn't mean necessarily to say that one death was that death due to having Omicron or what, and having COVID? Or was it dying with COVID? Obviously, it's a, a travesty for that family. But it is really important that we know what the cause of death is. And of course, we're not going to be told that. I think there is a sense of political expediency here. Don't you think it's odd that suddenly Boris Johnson changes the narrative? One minute we're talking about parties that were held in Downing Street during the lockdown and suddenly he announces with a great flourish that we've got to move on with the booster, that we've got this terrible um, mutation that's occurring. He announces we're going to do a million vaccinations a, a day. And of course, they're woefully unprepared. There's no uh, infrastructure to do that. We know that 4.4 million people logged on to the NHS website, which then crashed. You've got people queuing five, six, seven hours to get the booster jab. Now, I think the booster is a good idea. It is clear from the data, and I'm just looking at it here, that when you've got the Pfizer and we're using the Pfizer and the Moderna as the, as the booster dose, it does increase your antibodies by an enormous uh, number. So something between 11 and 25 fold. So it's an important thing to do, but it just seems a very strange timing to me that this is all announced at the time when Boris Johnson is feeling the heat. And of course, this has all been rushed through. So suddenly we're told there's this terrible uh, variant that we need suddenly to get hold of uh, the boosters. Then we're brought, uh, vaccine passports are brought in. This feels like 
a, a runaway train. It feels like the government is pushing through things, aided and abetted by Labour. And that's why I stand for the political party I do. We say absolutely no way to vaccine passports. This is not the way that Britain operates. This is the thin edge of, a thin edge of the wedge. And as I said earlier, the thing is that in Wales and Scotland, uh, they have uh, worse case rates than we do in England. And for the something like five or six weeks, they've both had vaccine mm -hmm. passports. So why on earth are they imposing them on England? And the only conclusion you can make uh, is that they are not being brought in for medical reasons. They're being brought in for reasons of political expediency, uh, which. Brings... Well, well, yeah, oh, sorry. And I said to you, you know, as, as you know, I went to a large concert. You had to show certification to go to that concert or a negative lateral flow test. And, and I got COVID at that venue. Well, that proves to me that does not work. We know from the data from Scotland, the vaccine passports don't work. And actually, I think the way that the government got this through was by saying, actually, the certification would also include a negative lateral flow test. But mark my words, as time goes on, that will go. And I think fundamentally as a medic, you know, we have this maxim, first of all, do no harm. It should be up to the individual to decide what they put in their bodies. We decide whether we smoke, whether we drink, whether we want to be immunized. And I think it is up to the individual. It is not acceptable for the government to use blackmail to make people have a vaccination. And this uh, vaccine rollout or the booster rollout, which Boris uh, is absolutely obsessed with, uh, and it certainly is uh, all guns blazing at the moment. It is rolling fast and people are queuing for five hours to get their booster mm. uh, because they are frightened of getting Omicron. Uh, but as I say, we cannot definitively say uh, anything about Omicron yet, uh, but it does look as if it uh, will cause you a couple of days aches and pains, a little bit of fatigue, a slight cough, and then you're better. So what exactly is the government trying to protect us from? Well, that's right. And I think I think one of the other things that Professor of Medicine made a very good point actually on Talk Radio earlier today, just saying, why are we testing? When we've vaccinated 93% of the population, we're now rolling out these boosters. Why are we testing? The more you test, the more you find. Do we actually test for flu? We know the numbers of deaths from flu every year, but do we test everyone for flu? No, we don't. So we have to learn to live with this virus. We are not going to get rid of it. And I think also fundamentally, and I said this many weeks ago to you, we keep being told that we're there to protect the NHS. Well, quite frankly, the NHS should be there to protect us. And what this underlines to me is actually the NHS is unfit for purpose. As you know, we've gone from something like 300,000 beds down to about 167,000 beds it's simply not enough capacity we're surprised every single year when there's a flu outbreak and suddenly the hospitals are overwhelmed so if you add into the mix something like covid clearly the hospitals cannot cope and now of course we've got gps who are being paid 30 pounds more per immunization to make sure these boosters are rolled out what about the thousands of people who are waiting to see a gp all of those missed cancer diagnoses which i think is an absolute travesty and those people are being let down by the very NHS that they're meant to be protecting. It's interesting you med mentioned about uh, Dominic Raab when he said uh, there's 250 people in hospital with Omicron <laughs> and it turned out there were actually nine. Uh, and he immediately said, oh, yes, that's right. Uh, it's almost as if, uh, no, 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 Dominic, uh, we're going to say two, 250 tomorrow. Uh, this government seems to have uh, a lot of investment in uh, creating the atmosphere of an emergency. That's what Boris is trying to do. That's why he went on to television at the weekend, on a Sunday night. This is no mm. ordinary circumstance. This is an emergency. Uh, and I'm not entirely convinced we've got an emergency. It's OK all very well to keep telling us this Omicron really spreads very, very quickly. Uh, and, you know, as the Sajid Javid plucking a figure out of the air said the other day, we could soon have a million cases a day. Well, that's all very well. But if it's just a mild variant and the symptoms are mild, a couple of days of sniffles, uh, then where's the emergency? Well I, well, I totally agree. And actually, I spoke to colleagues in the United States. They think we're absolutely mad as well. The US is not changing its policy 
one bit. The fact is, as you rightly say, there is no no data at all to show that, yes, it's more transmissible, but is there any more dangerous? No, it appears not. So what on earth are we doing? We're clearly frightening people to death. From what I hear, the app in Westminster amongst Conservative backbenchers is morose. They know that really they have no confidence in their leader and he's only just being held up just about. And what I'm really worried about is people's mental health because people cannot cope with much more uncertainty. People are just about getting ready to go away for Christmas. They now don't know whether they can do that. It looks like you will be able to go away at Christmas, but I'm hearing they're thinking about having a lockdown in the new year. That clearly cannot happen. Britain's economy cannot cope. Those SMEs cannot cope. Many businesses are still trying to recover from the last lockdown. And then, of course, very helpfully, they're now talking about furlough coming back. This is no way to run a country. This is ridiculous. We can't go on like this. Up in Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon uh, has announced that only three ha households will be allowed to mix. Uh, shops and pubs are returning to social distancing uh, and contact tracing. And she says that mm. if you must, you know, rather begrudgingly, she says, if you must meet on Christmas Day, keep the windows <laughs> yeah. open. I mean, this is just becoming insane, isn't it? I mean, yeah, the reason I'm laughing is because, you know, if you don't laugh, you would cry, wouldn't you? I mean, that, that's certainly putting the door there into into the into Nicola Sturgeon. I mean, the fact is that Christmas is a time of celebration. I think we, we've done it remarkably well. The NHS staff have done an incredible job getting these vaccines into people's arms. And of course, uh, this booster rollout is, is going very well. I think 570,000 given yesterday. I and mean, it's it's incredible but the point is that it is just one illness we have many other viruses we have cancer what about all those people who have breast lumps who are not being seen those people with prostatic symptoms that are not being seen those people who cannot get elective procedures and now we've heard that again elective procedures are going to be suspended now i don't know what the end game is here but i am deeply worried about the future of the nhs because if you keep putting off elective procedures if you keep putting off people going to see their gp there won't be a service that will be there for people in the future. So I think the government needs to think very carefully about what it's doing, because at this rate, the NHS will not exist in five years. And we can't uh, gear an entire country and all of our lives uh, towards protecting our health service. It cannot take that amount of priority. So that, again, is pretty insane. Uh, just before you go, David, uh, we have to ask, as he imposes these new restrictions on us, mm -hmm. and as you say, uh, possibly worryingly is marching towards another lockdown, the ultimate restriction, what moral authority do you think the Prime Minister has in telling us to obey his rules? Well, very little, I think. Uh, what will be interesting is compliance. Will people actually do what the government wants them to do? And I think the feeling on the street is, well, if it's OK for Downing Street to have parties, why can't we? And that's very much what I'm hearing on the ground. People saying, well, we'll, we'll say we're going to comply, but we're not going to. And I think you're going to see actually this all fall apart. It really is an extremely worrying situation, uh, but it's always very good to talk to you, David. Uh, keep your pecker up and we will talk again this time next week. Uh, thank you so much for your time.